Hey, how's it going ladies and gentlemen of the internet? My name is Doodles and that is right, it is that time of year again where I do my annual studio tour where I basically show you the room where all the magic happens or, well, it hasn't been happening in 2018 that much uh, because I have not been uploading as much as I would have liked to uh, but I have been super super busy with a lot of things outside of YouTube. Uh, early this year we opened up our own business uh, which the whole process to open a business took us about five months from saying should we open a business to actually opening the doors and then once we did open the doors you've got to figure out how to actually run a business and keep it open so there's been so much stuff going on sort of like outside of YouTube that uh, YouTube had to take a bit of a back seat uh, which was unfortunate but uh, I'm hoping that uh, from here on out you're going to start seeing a lot more content. I've got so much stuff planned and I cannot wait to share it all with you guys uh, but for now we're going to take a look at where the magic should have been happening in 2018 hopefully where a lot of it will be happening in 2019. Overall, there's not a great deal of change in the studio as opposed to the 2017 studio to a lot of the gear is still exactly the same uh, but there's a few new additions and a few things have left the studio so there is going to be some changes so hopefully you guys enjoy it and if you're going to enjoy this video make sure you give this video a big fat thumbs up if you're new around here make sure you subscribe with notifications on click the subscribe button click the notification bell and click all that way you'll never miss out on the video goes live on the channel because like I said 2019 I intend on it being a busy year for the channel so make sure you got a notification bell on the you won't miss out on any of the content that I upload. Uh, but the biggest change of the studio, without a doubt, you've been able to see it so far in this video, is my wall of vinyl. This has been in the making since uh, by April, uh, sort of been getting the vinyl for it, finished it off, or at least the first draft of it, uh, very, very recently. I'm hoping to get to a point where I can have that much vinyl that I can basically just alternate the vinyl uh, video a video so it all looks a little bit different for you guys and sort of looks like it's not the same old thing all the time maybe put some new cool stuff in there so I've got to buy a lot of vinyl though to make that happen but hopefully one day that will happen but all this vinyl here that you can see with the exception of that one that I own uh, and one more down there which I own as well all of these are original vinyl some of these have gone on 40 years maybe even longer uh, in age there's some awesome albums in this list uh, there is the likes of the Sex Pistols never mind the bollocks the original vinyl from the album from 1977 or whenever that album came out uh thin lizzy live and dangerous you got uh some rush albums there's a few rush albums i think there's five, four or five albums uh, in this wall uh, there's some motorhead which you can see there there's a lot of motorhead as well there's a lot of motorhead in this uh, collection and uh, there's a simpsons one there and uh, there's phil liner there's more bush there's thin lizzy uh, if we look there's elvis presley u2 there is so much stuff on this wall and it is so so cool stiff little fingers if you guys haven't checked out stiff little fingers before they are my favorite punk band of all time uh, go and check them out they inspired a lot of bands such as green day uh, in fact they played with green day at hyde park i think in 2017 and uh, i know billy joe is a massive fan of them so uh, yeah if you like punk music go and check out stiff little fingers they are absolutely awesome highly recommend you go and check out the live stuff rather than the studio stuff me personally i prefer their live albums over the studio ones uh, but some fantastic music go and check them out uh, but yeah there's some great stuff on this wall i've got some singles up there as well uh, from the likes of the, i've got the clash uh, there's motorhead rush guns and roses uh, sex pistols uh, there's all sorts of great stuff up here on this wall there's going to be a video on the channel soon where i go into more detail uh, obviously i'm stuck like this with a camera i can't really show you a great representation of what is on this wall uh, but like i said earlier the only one one of the only two vinyls i personally own and bought myself this one is dodge's scented and one ep signed by rob beer uh, dave and ben this one took me months of waiting to get hold of it uh, i bought it and it took about four or five months before i actually showed up at the door but it is so awesome i love this album so much that it is centered in my vinyl uh, wall which is cool and if you guys haven't heard of dodge then that's really surprising because if you guys play guitar or watch guitar stuff on YouTube, you guys know who Rob Chapman is. His band, as long as we Assad, Ben and Dave, fantastic band, fantastic EP. Highly recommend you go and check it out. But like I said, there's going to be a dedicated video on the channel very soon of this uh, collection where I'm going to talk about some of the individual albums. So I'll show you some of the cool pieces. I've got like coloured vinyls and stuff like that. And uh, like I said, they're all original as well. So uh, 
yeah, some really cool history on this wall, and I hope there'll be a lot more added in the future. Uh, but moving on from that, obviously you guys want to check out the guitars, uh, because this is a guitar channel. You come here for the guitars, and that is what we are going to be checking out. And uh, like I said, most of them are still the same as last year. There's been a couple of them, a uh, couple of the cheaper ones that I never really used that have uh, left us uh, this year. Uh, but I've also got one or two new additions that I don't think you've seen yet. One of them you definitely haven't seen yet, because no one's seen it yet. Uh, but hopefully you'll be seeing it on the channel very, very soon. Uh, so, do you want to see what it is? All right, check this out. This is a 2016 BC Rich Lucky 8 eight string flying V guitar Duncan designed active pick was based basically the import version of the Seymour Duncan blackout a uh, mahogany body uh, I believe it's a maple neck I think it's a maple neck I bought a maple neck and rosewood fretboard super super awesome uh, I've never owned a V guitar and I've never owned eight strings so I ended up with both of them in one guitar however I probably shouldn't have done that in hindsight because uh, V's are notorious for being really awkward to play and I have no idea how to play an 8 string guitar so I'm trying to learn how to play 8 string in the really awkward position uh, but it's a super sweet guitar, it sounds great, it feels great, that neck is a beast, biggest neck that I've ever played obviously being an 8 string uh, but it is so so cool now once I figure out how to actually make something half decent with it uh, you guys will be seeing it on the channel including a full review so yeah that is my BC Rich 8 string, I haven't shown this off on Instagram or anything yet, I literally have never posted this uh, guitar at all so uh, yeah you guys are seeing this one first as I put a picture in between filming this and actually uh, uploading it on the internet but uh, if not you guys are getting the world premiere of my brand new BC Rich 8 string uh, which is super super sweet but uh, let's check out some of the other guitars now up first is my number one without a doubt this is my number one guitar this is my 2014 Gibson LPJ uh, this guitar is so so sweet I love the fact that it's so plain uh, it's got a plain top a very very thin nitro paint job so it wears really quickly uh, you can actually see the reflection on the uh the camera there where the pickups are near the pickup selectors all those scratches there that is basically when I'm playing big sort of pop punk power chords and they're scratching it and I'm hoping that the paint's going to start wearing away so it's just, you can see it really reflecting at the minute but I'm hoping the paint's going to start wearing away uh, but you can also see down here uh, the paint is starting to wear there's a little bit of wear down there too there's some on the back as well uh, you can see there the paint, uh, the back is starting to wear away. Uh, as you can see, the uh, the input jack is hanging out of the guitar. I dropped the guitar quite a while ago and um, smashed the input uh, bit, the plate that goes on the side of the guitar. And I've never gone out changing it because uh, I don't play live, so I've just kind of just been keeping it as is. But I'm going to get a new plate, I promise, and uh, then it will be back to oh, its former glory until it gets really worn and the paint's going to look awesome when it starts to wear away, and I cannot wait for that. It's currently only got five strings because I snapped one the other day. I haven't gone out and changed it yet because instead I started using my Schecter S1, which we're going to see a little bit later on, to do the top 10 Green Day covers video, uh, which is on the channel now. If you haven't checked it out, go and watch it. It's a damn good video, if I do say so myself. Uh, but this is a mahogany body, a uh, maple neck, rosewood fret board uh, it's got the gibson 61 pickups in it which are like a hotter version of the 57 classics which a lot of people love uh, i also find the 57 classics are a little bit too bright sounding for me uh, they're not if you go anything sort of heavier than pop punk or classic rock they seem to be a bit too trebly in my opinion so these are a little bit hotter than them and these are absolutely fantastic these are potentially the best pickups i've ever played and i love everything about them uh, so yeah this is my number one guitar you've seen it on the channel before you're going to keep on seeing it it is absolutely fantastic now that we've checked out my number one guitar, now it's time to check out my number two guitar. Oh, this one could actually, it's probably joint first in my LPJ as being my favourite guitar. And that is this 2015, I believe it is, Made in Korea BC Ridge Gold Top Mockingbird. Now this thing, it plays like an absolute dream. It is so, so nice to play. Uh, it's really weird though. It's got a, it's only got a 24.6 inch scale length as opposed to something like a 24 and 3 quarter that you'd get on something like a Les Paul, which I think is also quite common in a lot of BC Rich guitars. Uh, but this is 24.6 and it's got 24 frets. So it's got a slightly small scale length thing you tend to see and it's got two more frets, uh, which obviously means that the frets are really close together. And uh, because of that, it means that you can go up and down the fretboard really, really easily. And uh, it just, it just plays like an absolute dream. And I love this guitar. You see it quite a lot 
in videos and you're going to continue to see it a lot more it's a mahogany body mahogany neck rosewood fretboard and then it's got the stock bc rich humbuckers air which tell you the truth they are the only thing i let this guitar down the stock bc rich pickups are a little bit muddy uh, so i'm going to be swapping them out hopefully very soon uh, with these this is the uh, iron gear steam hammer pickup uh, these are super super cool british company and they are awesome quality and they are super super cheap now I've actually got another guitar which have iron gears in which you're going to see in a little bit later on. Uh, but I don't know what these are meant to be like. I know a lot of the iron gear pickups are usually sort of clones of uh, Seymour Duncan pickups. Uh, but these are cheap and in my opinion just as good. Uh, the, the guitar that I've got with iron gears in already, I paid less than £60 for the set and it's a JB Jazz clone set. And I believe a JB on its own cost £65 to £70. So I paid less for both pickups than you would if you got one if you just bought Seymour Duncan and in my opinion they are every bit as good as a Seymour Duncan pickup so I'm super excited to put these into it. I've only got the bridge pickup for now because I'm not entirely sure what I want to put in the neck. Uh, these are quite high output I believe this is like 15 in the bridge and 12 in the neck so I'm not sure if this is going to be a little bit too high for me so I might go for something more like a uh, jazz like a Seymour Duncan jazz type of pickup maybe something a bit more bluesy a bit smoother in the neck I'm going to decide I'm going to wait and see and see uh, what sort of tickles my fancy and see what I fancy doing once I get this pickup fitted I might sort of fall in love with this pickup want the same in the neck I'm not entirely sure I've gone for the white rather than the black because I think with the gold top the white is going to look super super cool uh, so I expect this to be fitted in that guitar very very soon and there's going to be videos on it and you're going to see that BC Ridge a hell of a lot more in videos in the future and then seeing as we've just been talking about a Mockingbird, here is my other one. This isn't a BC Rich though, this is a Fernandez slash Bernie, a made in Japan MG80X Mockingbird. Uh, this is a signature model of Hide from the band X Japan. Uh, I believe this is some point around the mid 90s, maybe a bit sooner, maybe a bit older. It, they don't have a serial number, a lot of Japanese guitars don't have serial numbers on, so it can be quite hard to date them. Uh, but this guitar is so, so sweet. It's got mahogany body, maple neck, rosewood fretboard, and the super cool thing about this guitar is it's got both active and passive pickups in the same guitar a uh, stock this would have a, a fernandez copy of a amg 81 and then a, a fernandez copy of a, a damasio super distortion in the neck uh, but the previous owner in japan uh, swapped the um the clone amg for an actual amg 81 and then also left the uh, fernandez super distortion copy in the neck too uh, so it's got active in the bridge passive in the neck and that is so cool you don't see that very often at all and uh, i've always wanted that in the guitar because i really like the amg 81 as a bridge pickup but i've never been a big fan of something like the 85 so i always want something a bit more a bit more passive, a bit more bluesy in the neck. Uh, so having that ability to have the passive and active in the same guitar takes all the boxes for me. This guitar plays like a dream. And uh, it's got a little bit of a wiring issue at the minute, so I just need to sort it out. And then you're going to be seeing it a lot on the channel. And I'm going to do reviews of it. You're going to see it in a lot of covers. A lot of videos that I do on the channel, this will be a guitar that you will see a lot. And I cannot wait to show it off to you guys. And now moving on to another brand and another body shape that I absolutely love. This is my Schecter S1 Custom. I've been a big fan of the S1 for many, many years. Ever since I saw Zaki Vench for Vench 74 playing one, I've just wanted a S1. And uh, I've got one and it is super, super sweet. Uh, it's a mahogany body. I believe it's got a mahogany neck, ebony fretboard, and it's got a Seymour Duncan Custom in the bridge and a 59 in the neck. Uh, I was going to swap out the Custom for some a little bit more higher output, but the more that I've used it, uh, it even handles a lot of the stuff that I didn't think it would very, very well. So there's a good chance I'm probably going to leave it stock. I'll see how it goes. I might swap it out. But right now, I'm more than happy to keep it stock as is. A uh, super, super comfortable guitar. The S1 body style is a lot like the SG. It's very, very thin. It's very, very easy to play. If you guys have played Schecter before, you know that the necks are super, super comfortable to play. Uh, I've never played a bad Schecter, and this is no exception. This guitar is absolutely fantastic. Uh, you will have seen it very, very recently on my top 10 Green Day covers video uh, that I just released about a week or two ago. If you haven't checked it out already, there'll be a link in the description box, or just click on the channel and uh, go and watch it. It'll be like the second video video on the channel uh, so yeah go and check it out this guitar was using it and it sounded great and uh, it played great as well it was so much fun making the video with this guitar and uh, i guarantee you'll be seeing this a lot more on the channel in the future
Now moving on to my next Schecter, we have the Schecter Solo Damien Elite. This is a Les Paul style guitar, but man, this is one heavy guitar, both in how it sounds and its weight. Uh, it's got AMG 8185 in the for the pickles and the bridge and the neck respectively. Uh, so it's super, super cool for the heavier metal type of stuff as well. Uh, it weighs right around nine and a half pounds, maybe more. It weighed nine and a half when I weighed it, but I'm sure it's actually heavier. I'm sure it's a heavier guitar than that because this is by far the heaviest guitar I've ever held. Uh, it is one thick slab of wood. Uh, the neck is no exception. The neck feels like a baseball bat, but in the best possible way. Uh, it's got a mahogany body, which I'm assuming is not chambered. Uh, it's got a maple neck, rosewood fretboard, and like I said, the active pickups, uh, which make it an absolutely killer metal guitar. Uh, you've seen this in a lot of videos in the past. Uh, I've used it quite a lot, uh, especially back in like 2016 and maybe early 2017, I was using it a lot. Uh, but I haven't used it much recently because I haven't done as men much metal stuff on the channel. Uh, so who knows, I might have to actually find an excuse to find something to play this one, uh, just so I can get it back on the channel because it is too, too nice not to play at all. It is absolutely fantastic and I love it. Like I say, it's so heavy though uh, that I don't like standing up with it too often because it just digs into your shoulder too much and it it's it's one heavy guitar. But uh, for the sound you get and how great it plays, it, it's kind of worth it. Now next up we have a trio of Les Pauls and first up is my 2005 Gibson Les Paul Custom. I've wanted this guitar for about a decade and when I finally got one I was so so happy. I wanted one after seeing uh, Billy Joe started using them in the American Idiot era of Green Day and I fell in love with the Junior and I've loved it ever since and the fact I've got it in my collection now is super super cool. Uh, it's mahogany body, mahogany neck, a uh, single P90, it's just a slab of wood with a pickup in it. That is all you need, and that's part of the reason why I love the Junior, and also why I love the LPG. I love the sort of stripped back, more plain guitars rather than the over-the-top fancy ones. It's one guitar that you can just use and abuse, and it just keeps coming back for more, and the Junior does just that. Uh, I need to replace the tuning pegs, though. One of them is bent now from a fall, and... Um, it doesn't really hold tuning, so I'm going to get some new tuning pegs for it, and then I guarantee you'll be seeing it a lot more on the channel. So I've been having using it recently, uh, but hopefully once I get the new tuning pegs, it will all be sorted. And uh, yeah, it will definitely come one of the mainstays on the channel. Uh, but even I'm not using it, I still love that it's in my collection. I see it every day, and I love the fact that it is there. It's definitely a dream guitar that I now own. Now next up is a guitar that has so much sentimental value to me. This is my 2004 Epiphone Les Paul Standard. This was the second guitar that I ever owned. Uh, my first guitar was a Squire Strat. I didn't really gel with it. Although I love playing guitar, but I didn't like the guitar. I almost gave up playing, but I got this guitar and I fell in love. Uh, I've actually started modifying it over the last couple of years and it's almost finished now. I keep sort of putting off finishing it, uh, but it should be finished very, very soon so you can start seeing it on the channel because it hasn't been used properly on the channel before. Uh, but it's a mahogany body, mahogany neck, uh, rosewood fretboard. And uh, as you can see, I've done a few little modifications to it. The pickup selective is now down the bottom there because uh, a lot of my guitars like Reshecta, and the BC Rich and that they have the pickup selector there and I've gotten quite used to it now and I really like the pickup selector down there so I've moved it down there and I've put a kill switch uh, where the old pickup selector was mainly just to fill the hole uh, but also it's definitely it comes in handy uh, it's a two volume one tone and the pickups uh, are also iron gear I mentioned the guitar had iron gear pickups in it this is the one uh, this has a hot slag and a roller mill which is a JB and jazz a uh, clone set from Seymour Duncan. Uh, this the pickups cost less than sixty pound to buy for the set, and like I said earlier, a single JB costs sixty five to seventy. So the whole set is cheaper than a single Duncan pickup, and in my opinion, every bit as good. I've also sanded down the finish a little bit to take off the shine because the, the solid colour Epiphones can look very toy-like, very plasticky. So I wanted to sort of give it more of a matte feel. I've uh, still got a little bit of work to it. You can still see some sort of shininess to it. But that's I kind of wanted to go like that. I wanted it to be a bit more rough looking but not sort of like completely relic and have half the paint missing. I want it to be a bit more stripped back. So it's like a proper sort of rock and roll guitar rather than a shiny plastic toy. Uh, but this guitar is so, so nice. It plays great. And it has so much sentimental value to me. And uh, I will never, ever get rid of it. Um, as you can see, the back is very, very uh, stripped back and uh, sanded down. I'm going to sort of try and make the front look a little bit more like that. Uh, like I said, I want to go for a matte black kind of finish. Uh, just to make it some sort of like pure rock and roll machine. And uh, once I uh, get the last little bit done, I just need to get some new knobs for the uh, controls. I'm going to change the uh, the tuning keys because they're the original ones. Just they not don't hold the tuning that well. And then uh, just get the back plates for it. And then after that, just give it a setup and it's good to go. And you're going to see it a lot on the channel from here on out. 
Now, last up in my trio of Les Pauls is my Epiphone Les Paul 1960 Tribute Plus. Now, this guitar is so, so nice. Uh, however, unfortunately, I don't tend to play it that much now that I've got my LPJ because spec-wise, it is very, very similar, but the LPJ just kind of beats a little bit. Uh, it's got mahogany body, mahogany neck, a uh, rosewood fretboard, and it's got the Gibson Classic 57 pickups in it, which sound fantastic, but in my opinion, just a little bit too bright and trebly sometimes. Uh, if you go for anything sort of heavier than a uh, pop, punk or classic rock doesn't really deal too well with them uh, whereas the uh, the LPJ pickups of the Gibson 61s a slightly hotter version of it and they suit a more varied style of music but uh, this guitar plays absolutely fantastic I don't play it as nearly as much as uh, nearly as I don't play it nearly as much as I should, uh, but who knows, I might start using it a little bit more. I sort of forget about the guitar and I forget that I actually own it, uh, but who knows, now I've done this video, maybe it'll spur me on to maybe just grab it once in a while and uh, see how it sounds. It might work in some songs, so uh, hopefully you'll start seeing it a little bit more on the channel, but it's an absolutely fantastic guitar. The next up is my acoustic, the only acoustic I actually own. It's the Vintage VE300 Electro Acoustic. Uh, this guitar is absolutely awesome. It's great bang for the buck. Vintage guitars generally are. Uh, they're sort of two to three hundred pound in the price point, but they don't play like two to three hundred pound guitars. They play so much nicer. Uh, you, whenever I have an acoustic on the channel, this is what it is, or this is what you hear. I used it in the Green Day cover for Boulevard of Broken Dreams. If you watched the video, that's what you heard. Uh, it's a fantastic acoustic. I used to be an artist for them. I'm not anymore, uh, but even though I'm not an artist for them now, I will still rep them and say that these guitars are absolutely fantastic. And if you're in the market for some great bang for the buck guitars, whether it's a Les Paul, a Fender, anything like that, definitely check out Vintage, see if you can save a few quid and get an equally as good guitar. I cannot recommend Vintage enough to you guys. And then speaking of Fender, this is actually the only Fender shape that I own. However, it is not a Fender. It is actually a Bolt Blaze. This is a Fender Jazzmaster copy uh, made here in the UK by a, a small British company. It's a super cool guitar. It's got a mahogany body, maple neck with those lovely block inlays. I love that on this guitar. Uh, Rosewood fretboard and the double P90s in a, a nice metallic purple. Uh, I got this a great deal on this guitar and it's absolutely fantastic. You've seen it a couple of times in the channel. Uh, you'll probably start seeing a little bit more as well. Uh, super great guitar, uh, great brand. I was going to become an artist for them, but the deal kind of fell through. They kind of just stopped negotiating. We, we, it just it didn't happen. But either way, still love the guitar. The company's still awesome. And uh, yeah, now that I'm sort of looking at this guitar, I'm sort of thinking I really wouldn't mind some more Fenders. So uh, I don't know. I really want to Stratton and Telly. Maybe you'll start seeing them on the channel at some point in the future. Uh, I haven't had a Stratton and Telly in a very long time, but I never used to like them. I was always Les Paul or nothing, but I think as I'm getting older... I'm starting to appreciate sort of likes of Fender a lot more and I really want to get them in the collection to sort of round off the collection and sort of fill it out and give me that tonal possibility no matter what I need. I'm going to have a guitar for it. That's my plan. Uh, so who knows, you might see a Fender or a similar brand uh, guitar on the channel very, very soon. Or fingers crossed you do anyway. Now it seems like we're going backwards in numbers in, in terms of the strings. We've gone from 8 string to 6 string and now we're talking about the four strings. First up is my bass, the very first bass that I ever got. Uh, it's not a Warwick though, it looks like a Warwick, but it is not a Warwick. It is actually a Westfield, which is like a 100 quid copy, but in my opinion, it plays so much nicer than what I'd expect for 100 quid. Uh, this bass plays absolutely fantastic. The only downside is the pickups are a little bit weak, but it's kind of be expected from the guitar at this price point. Uh, if new pickups were in this, this bass it would be absolutely killer uh, it plays fantastic i think it's got some sort of i think it's an ash body could be wrong but i think it's an ash body a uh, maple neck rosewood fretboard uh 24 frets and it is absolutely fantastic this is this is the bass that started the YouTube channel. When I started doing YouTube, this is the bass that you heard in everything. I don't use it much now because I've got another one with better pickups, uh, but it's got so much sentimental value to me, I would never get rid of it, and it will always be in my collection, and it will always be getting used. Now, last up in my gear collection, I said earlier that I really love the S1 body shape. Uh, so when I found that there was a base on set for sale with the same body shape, I just had to get it. And that is the Schecter SB1. This is the base version of the Schecter S1, which like I said, one of my favorite body shapes of all time. So having a base that's like this, is super super cool to me. Uh, this is a 1998 model, so it's 20 years old now. Uh, it's got mahogany body, maple neck, rosewood fretboard, and it's got active EMG pickups in it. Uh, this guitar sounds fantastic, and I use it all the time now. You heard a lot of back to square one stuff. Uh, you hear it on the channel as well. It was the bass used in my Green Day video that I did like a week or two ago. Uh, so yeah, this is super cool bass. Like I said, it's the oldest guitar that I own, unless the Bernie's maybe old, I'm not entirely sure. But either way, it's 20 years old and uh, it looks absolutely fantastic. I've got the S1 guitar, I've got the S1 bass. What more do you need? 
And then moving over to my desk area, it's super, super messy. I tried to tidy it up for you guys when I did it on the video, but obviously as you can see, there's a load of game consoles here, uh, which obviously means wires. So there's only so tidy you could get without, I don't know, there's too many wires there which can't really be held. But I've got a MIDI keyboard there, it's a 49 key MIDI keyboard. Uh, I've got my uh, Mac Mini, which I use mainly for university work underneath my monitor there. Uh, it's uh, the i5 one. It's, I've got my interface there. It's the Focusrite Scarlett 18i20, 18, 18 input, 20 output interface. Uh, I've got my uh, monitors, which are the M Audio uh, BX5 monitors. Just pretty cheap and cheerful, but they do the job just fine. Uh, I've got a webcam, which is the Logitech uh, C930E, uh, which you see quite a lot, especially when I'm sitting down when I'm talking to you guys in videos. That's usually the, the camera that I'm using for it. I've also got my microphone that I use with the arm, uh, which is the T-Bone SC450, which is a, a Torment's own brand uh, microphone. I use that for all my talk and stuff that I do on the channel as well. I've also got a few drawers full of like miscellaneous crap, which I'm not going to show you guys because it's just like wires and stuff like that. Uh, but I've got down there, you can see my uh, T-Bone, the Torment own SM57 clone. Uh, I believe Glenn Frickett did a video on this not long ago. Uh, I've had it for a couple of years now and it was absolutely fantastic. And I sort of hear Glenn Frickett say that uh, it was a great microphone. It uh, was super, super cool because this is a microphone that I use uh, whenever I need to mic any sort of amps. When I did the Orange amps uh, early this year for Orange amps, uh, the reviews of them, I used this microphone for that and it sounded absolutely fantastic i've got a load of guitar strings in those packets there uh, so yeah just a load of miscellaneous stuff kicking about the room uh, i've got my computer there which obviously is where all the magic happens because uh, it's pretty much the heart of the whole studio uh, it's got an i5 4670 uh, 3.4 gigahertz quad core it's got a amd uh, r9270x graphics card just a simple graphics card because i don't really pc game that much uh, 16 gig of ram and uh, i really need to get some more storage space for it i'm kind of running low but it does the job for now uh, hoping to upgrade my computer maybe some point in the new year but it all depends obviously finances if i can't i'd love to but um not entirely sure uh, but we'll see how it goes. But I've got a few ideas I want to do uh, with the studio, with the computer as a whole, to try and make the whole setup a little bit better. I've also got my Elgato game capture card, which obviously I use when I'm recording gameplay, which I do a lot of now, uh, which is why the consoles are here. I've got my Nintendo Switch, the Xbox One, uh, my Xbox 360, and the PS4s underneath it. Uh, I do a lot of gaming on YouTube now. I sort of took a long break from gaming on YouTube. I started on YouTube, actually, as a gamer. And then I moved over to music, then I've gone back to gaming as well. Uh, so I upload gaming stuff all the time. The channel link will be in the description box. If you like sort of video games, or you want to maybe just come hang out and see me on YouTube a lot more than you do on this channel, uh, give it a subscribe. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers and get monetized. Uh, so yeah, give it a subscribe. It will really help us out a lot. And uh, you'll see me a lot more on YouTube over on that channel. And then uh, if you want to know why, in addition to the business, why I haven't been uploading much in 2018, this is exactly why. Uh, because I have an addiction to Fortnite and I can't stop playing it. Uh, so as you can see, there's my character doing a cool dance on screen for you guys uh, if any of you guys play Fortnite, let me know leave your epic ids down below in the comment section there uh, i'll add you and maybe we can play it together that would be super super cool play on the euro servers but i'll play any platform pc switch ps4 xbox one you name it i can play it so uh, if any of you guys play Fortnite, let us know let us know but that is why i generally don't upload on youtube these days because i just play Fortnite all day so yeah so that is pretty much the uh, studio to it, that is everything that you need to see of the studio. And like I said, not a great deal different, but um, there's been a few changes, which is cool. So right, that is the end of the studio tour. Uh, that's pretty much everything that you need to see in the studio. It's not a great deal to show you guys anyway. Uh, as you can see, if you watched last year's video, it uh, hasn't changed a great deal. There's been a few changes, obviously the BC Rich uh, is brand new on the uh, in the studio as well. Uh, I don't know if you saw my Strector Bass or the Bolt or the, even the Vintage. I can't remember if they were there last year or not. Uh, but I've also got the Vinyl Wall, which is probably the biggest change of the year. Uh, obviously, this is this was not there. It was a blue screen last year. Uh, but overall, the room is exactly the same. I'm sure even that half of that text is probably still the same because that board never gets used. Uh, and all the stuff like that Stormtrooper and that, they were there last year as well. Uh, so, yeah, the studio hasn't changed too much in design apart from just a couple of bits and pieces. Uh, but I'm hoping next year I might see some bigger changes. I've got a few new ideas uh, that I want to do with the studio. I want to get a new desk. I want to start getting some nice LED lighting in the room, give it some nice ambience and all that stuff. Um, maybe some new gear changes, maybe new computer stuff. We'll see how obviously finances go over the course of the year. Uh, but I've got a few things planned where if things go okay, then 
I've got a few changes that I want to make. Uh, but yeah, that is the end of the studio too, guys. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one today. Uh, it's a nice little insight to sort of let you guys see where all the magic happens, like I said at the start of the video, where it hasn't been happening this year, but hopefully where a lot of it will be happening next year, because I've got so many ideas and I cannot wait to start creating them and sharing them with you guys. I'm going all in my YouTube in 2019. That is my goal, to grow this YouTube channel to something half decent by the end of 2019. So I've got work cut out, so if you guys excited for that make sure you hit that thumbs up button and if you're new around here make sure you subscribe and notifications on click subscribe button click the notification bell then click all that way you'll never miss out on the video goes live on the channel because the only way to grow this channel is by you guys supporting it so if you guys dig what i'm doing make sure you're sticking around and uh, helping grow the channel with me and uh, that is the end of the video guys my name is Dules. i thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time